Hello and welcome to this presentation where we will be featuring and discussing the basics of the Nucleo L552ZEQ, the board of choice for the hands-on virtual trust zone activation webinar. In this video, our agenda consists of four key discussion points. We'll begin by locating important information pertaining to the L5 Nucleo board. Then a board unboxing demonstration will follow. Moving forward, we'll dissect the Nucleo and highlight some of the key components on board. Lastly, we'll wrap up the video with a few recommendations where you can delve deeper and learn more. Great, let's get started. In this section, we'll review where you can find information and the various documents available pertaining to the STM32 L5 Nucleo board. Starting at st.com, search for the Nucleo L552ZEQ. You will then be led to the Nucleo's landing page, in particular, the Overview tab. This page provides you with a brief overview of the product and lists several key features of the board. The Documentation tab lists relevant documents pertaining to the L5 Nucleo board. Please note that if you are looking for more specific documents, such as the microcontroller's datasheet, reference manual, or errata, you will have to perform a further search for the microcontroller part number on st.com. Under the CAD Resources tab, you will find a collection of layout files, the board's schematic, and the board's bill of materials file. Now that we've covered the documentation portion of this presentation, let's proceed onward to what you can expect when you receive your Nucleo board. Each board comes in sleek plastic packaging and preloaded with a demonstration firmware. To run this demo, you will need two additional things, a PC and a USB Type-B micro cable. Start by removing the board from its packaging and locate the USB ST link. Plug in the cable's micro B side to the board and the other side to your PC. You should then see a solid red LED near the USB SC link connector and the onboard user LEDs flash in a sequence. We have now confirmed that the board is working as expected and are ready to start developing. Now that you've seen the board and know what to expect, let's familiarize ourselves with a few important onboard components. At the heart of the Nucleo board, you will find the STM32 microcontroller. In the case of this Nucleo board, the STM32 L552ZET6Q. These letters and numbers make up a code that represents features and describes some aspect of the microcontroller. Details that you can derive from the micro's naming convention include, but are not limited to, product type, subfamily, pin count, flash memory size, and package. All of this information can be found in the microcontroller's datasheet, namely under the ordering information section. There are three user accessible LEDs on the Nucleo board. LD3, a red LED connected to PA9, LD2, a blue LED connected to PB7, and finally, LD1, a green LED connected to PC7. There are two push buttons available on the Nucleo board. On the lower left hand corner is a blue user button. This button can be accessed through pin PC13. On the other side, in the lower right hand corner, is a black button. This button is connected directly to the micro's reset line. Toward the middle of the board, on both the left and right hand side, you will see header footprints. These provide direct access to all of the microcontroller's IOs and are denoted as CN11 and CN12 on the board. Moving inward, there are also another set of connectors. They allow for easy access to add ons compatible with the Arduino Uno, mounting of our X Nucleo shields, and are denoted as CN7, CN8, CN9, and CN10. The STM32 L5 Nucleo board comes with an onboard ST Link V2 1, which can function as a debugger or programmer. The ST Link is a mass storage programmer allowing for drag and drop binary programming and supports debugging via the SWD interface. To access the ST Link, Simply plug in your USB to the ST-Link USB connector denoted on board as CN1. Upon connecting the Nucleo board to your PC, you can check the status of the ST-Link connection using the ST-Link COM LED on the upper right-hand corner of the Nucleo. There are a total of five different possible ST-Link COM LED states. Blinking red indicates the first USB enumeration with the PC is taking place. Solid red indicates the communication between the PC and ST-Link has been established. 
Blinking red and green alternately indicates that data is being exchanged between the PC and the board. Solid green indicates that the last communication has been successful. Solid orange indicates that the SC Link's communication with the target has failed. Now that you know where to find relevant board documents, what to expect upon receiving your board, and are familiar with the key onboard components, you may find yourself wondering, what's next? And, how can I learn more? There are numerous videos available on our SC Microelectronics YouTube channel, in particular for the SCM32 L5 series. We recommend checking out the SCM32 L5 online training playlist, our hands-on Trust Zone webinar, our hands-on MOOC discussing what really matters with ultra-low power, and last but not least, our six-part security MOOC. To help you get started developing your next project, we first recommend getting familiar with the STM32 Cube L5 MCU package that can be found on ST.com. In this MCU package, you will find numerous application examples, example projects of all variations, and so much more. To supplement this MCU package, please review UM2656, AN5424, and UM2659. Thank you for watching. We hope that you enjoyed this brief introduction to the SCM32 L5 Nucleo board. See you next time!